Hi, Keith Farworth coming from Louisville, Kentucky, and today we're going to be talking about the parathyroid glands. And this is just an introductory video, but I wanted to explain a little bit about what parathyroids are and what they do. Now, the reason that they're called parathyroids is because they sit right behind the thyroid gland. And if we were to lift up this gland, we would likely see four tiny little parathyroids sitting behind the thyroid gland. These called parathyroid, meaning that they are around the thyroid. And typically we have two on each side, and typically they reside right behind that thyroid. Now, what does a parathyroid do? Well, it secretes, appropriately enough, parathyroid hormone, which we abbreviate as PTH. What does PTH do? PTH is the most important hormone for regulating your calcium balance. How is that done? Well, there's a blood supply that comes by these little parathyroids and these parathyroids will monitor the blood level of calcium and they will respond appropriately. So let's talk about calcium quickly for uh, just a moment. Normal calciums, typically for an adult, are somewhere between 9 and 10. If your calcium was low, all right, let's just say that your calcium for some reason was low at 8.0. Your parathyroid hormone would increase because the parathyroids realize there's a low calcium and so they're going to make more parathyroid hormone. Now, normal parathyroid hormone levels go between about 15 and 65. And so what we'll typically find is that if you have a low calcium, the body's going to produce more parathyroid hormone. It may produce, for instance, 95, well above normal, because the job of PTH is to raise the blood levels of calcium. So calcium increases to 8.5, and now the parathyroid, well, that's going to back off a bit, maybe to 75. And then as the calcium gets into the low end of the normal range, the parathyroid will have hormone that's in the high end of the normal range, and so you may see this drop into 60. So here we were low with calcium, and now we're getting into the normal range. And let's say that it gets to 9.5, we're going to see a continued drop, maybe down to 35. And as we get to the top end of the normal range, what we should see is that parathyroid hormone is at the bottom end of the normal range. And then if for some reason the calcium were to go even higher, let's say 10.5, we'd expect this parathyroid hormone to go down very, very low. Now it never actually gets to zero, but it should be very, very low. So if you have high calcium and things are working correctly, you should have a low parathyroid hormone. Now, why is this important? Well, sometimes we will see that patients come in and they have an issue because one of their parathyroid glands has gone bad. This parathyroid gland, let's say this one here, it has actually turned into a tumor and it's grown much bigger than its normal size and it is secreting parathyroid hormone inappropriately. And what we will see in these situations is that the parathyroid hormone is high even when the body, body doesn't need more calcium. So, let me give an example. Saw a patient just the other day, came in and the calcium was around 10.8. And as you can see, that's very much higher than normal. And if we look at our chart and we put 10.8 down here, we would expect, if things were working normally, that that parathyroid hormone would be at its very lowest. But in her case, she had a parathyroid hormone of 120. 120. So as we see, that's way off from where it should be. And this combination of high calcium and high parathyroid hormone that is indication that one of, at least one of these parathyroids has gone bad. When we get this sort of problem, we call that primary, abbreviated like that, primary hyperparathyroidism. And I know that's a mouthful, but primary hyperparathyroidism is actually a fairly common problem. In fact, about 1 in 100 women over the age of 50 will have a problem like this. The symptoms of hyperparathyroidism are 
quite similar to the symptoms of a bad thyroid. So we'll get people who are coming in and they have a whole litany of symptoms thinking that it's thyroid and they have a primary hyperparathyroidism. In fact, the symptoms of this are significant enough that I think it's going to warrant its own video. But I want to kind of complete the picture here and say, um, aside from the symptoms, which are not great and, and certainly no one should need to tolerate this, what are the medical consequences of having primary hyperparathyroidism? And I just want to highlight a few, but there are actually many. Well, one of the ways that PTH increases your calcium level is to increase the absorption of calcium from the gut. So when you eat food, a high PTH will help pull calcium. Okay, and I'm going to kind of redo this a little bit. It will, PTH will stimulate calcium absorption from the gut into the bloodstream. The second way that it will do this is it will pull the calcium out of your bones. Okay, and so if there's a high parathyroid hormone level, it signals the bones to release calcium to increase your blood levels of calcium. And in this case, even though she had plenty of calcium in her bloodstream, the signal was there and so the bones were releasing all this calcium. And that process leads to osteoporosis or its milder form, osteopenia, but it leads to thinning of the bones because the bones are giving up calcium to the bloodstream. And then the third thing is that the calcium is increased in the bloodstream when PTH is high by the action on the kidneys. And so what you'll get is concentration in the kidneys of calcium and that can lead to the formation of kidney stones. And people who have primary hyperparathyroidism are at risk for kidney stones and the longer they have this, the higher their risk of developing a kidney stone. The last thing I want to mention is that people who have high levels of calcium for a long period of time are at risk for atrial fibrillation of the heart, often abbreviated as AFib. Now AFib doesn't give you heart attacks, it puts you at risk for strokes. And so long-term hyperparathyroidism that is causing the calcium to be constantly elevated leads to premature osteoporosis, a risk of kidney stones, and the risk of developing atrial fibrillation of the heart. And actually the list goes on and on, but this just highlights that even if the symptoms were tolerable, primary hyperparathyroidism is not good for you. It is not healthy and it occurs quite commonly. So let's say that we do have this problem and we need it to be addressed. What is the solution? Well, there are no medicines to fix this problem. There are no supplements that you can take to fix this problem. The, rem the only solution of this problem is a surgical one where we go in and remove the bad parathyroid and almost instantly the other parathyroids will begin to balance the calcium properly. So that surgery can be very, very short, sometimes as little as 10 or 15 minutes through a small little incision low in the neck and patients recover quite remarkably fast from their abnormal calcium balance. Now, we're going to be putting out some more videos to discuss a few of these things in more detail, but I wanted to give this as an overview um, to help give you context, particularly if you're having high calcium levels or if you're having high parathyroid hormone levels or if you have low vitamin D. Now, I haven't explained vitamin D yet. I'm going to do that in a subsequent video, so I hope you'll look for that.